Good morning and welcome to our service today. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Now is the time to worship Come Now is the time to give your heart Come Just as you are to worship Come Just as you are few moments of quiet as we prepare for our prayers of penitence. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and mercy and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust, fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. 
pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, beginning at verse 31. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must un undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wouldn't exactly call this a favourite piece of scripture. In these days of apparently too much political correctness, I might call it challenging, forceful, determined or direct. A need to be genuine and honest would certainly result in me calling it worrying or even intimidating. Enjoyable? Not really. Just the thing then for these 40 days in the metaphorical wilderness of Lent. Maybe it's the pervading sense of violence. That comes in two ways during this comparatively short excerpt from roughly halfway through Mark's Gospel. In the face of much speculation from the disciples, Jesus challenges them to say who the people, figuratively the woman or man in the street, think he is. Various suggestions are put forward. Jesus then asks the disciples who they think he is. Peter identifies Jesus as the Messiah. Arguably, it's where Mark's story has been leading to up to this point. With no opportunity to reflect about the implications of this astounding insight, Jesus then, and this is where today's Gospel starts, speaks about how his story will conclude on earth. The reaction, particularly from Peter, is perhaps understandable. Shocked and confused, Peter doesn't understand. What Jesus has disclosed about his future is about as far removed from the several contemporary conventional expectations about what the Messiah, the Anointed One, is, is as far as that as you could imagine. The new leader of the Jewish people being rejected by the people's leaders? 
dying violently and rising? Surely not. And what on earth could rise again mean? No, no, certainly not. That, imagines Peter, is not where this story is leading. Jesus must have just got this bit wrong, surely. Jesus' reaction to Peter's misgivings is shocking. Peter, only seconds before, the only one who grasped that Jesus may be the Messiah, Peter's understanding of that word and concept then compared to the personification of evil, everything that is the polar opposite of Almighty God. Make no mistake, Jesus is furious at Peter's misunderstanding. Jesus' anger then spills out to the crowd following him and the disciples. Jesus clarifies, follow me, he says, if you want to live, or not. It's a clear black and white choice. Take it or leave it, your call. And if indeed you do want to follow me, be prepared, then take up your cross, he says. On occasion, I've worked out the courage, and it needs courage, to watch Mel Gibson's film, The Passion of the Christ. The last time was just under a year ago. With our church building recently closed, I was looking for some substitute to the familiar liturgies of Holy Week. Gibson's film, released back in 2004, covers the hours from the Last Supper to the Resurrection. It's an unusual production in several ways. First and foremost, it's in the languages of the time and place, mostly Aramaic, with a bit of Greek and Latin thrown in. But you get used to the subtitles surprisingly quickly. For me, it's the film's lack of reservation where violence is concerned, and that leads to a searing and visceral viewing experience. Watching our Lord's physical trials, which are not reduced for the squeamish, is all part of the experience. So, when I hear the words, take up your cross, I have no reservation about what the implications of those words are for anyone hearing today's Gospel. There's a lot of considered opinion that says the writer of Mark's Gospel put this reference about Jesus' followers carrying their own cross after the event, so to speak, a bit of artistic theo theological hindsight. But there are others who say that this gruesome means of execution was such a common aspect of life under the Roman occupation that the metaphor and appalling implications would have been well known to everybody. With all of this in mind, a daunting process for apparently only the strong in heart, or the lunatics. Where is the hope, love, or any kind of comfort here? When Jesus says, follow me, what does that mean for us in the here and now Today, as we contemplate, here in the wilderness of Lent 2021, the rest of the season before us. I hope I'm not going to annoy too much by saying that there isn't one agreed answer to that very sensible and relevant question. The Church as a whole continues to struggle with this question to this day, not the least because of the ever-changing demands placed on us by our various experiences with life. Take the last year. Enough said. But aside from this, there appears to be two approaches to answering the question. Of course, for some, it's an either-or decision. But for others, a mixture of the two, or a balance. Or worse, using ones of those very churchy words, attention. 
So, on one hand, following Jesus means just that, a sustained attempt by believers to use the phrase imitating Christ, mimicking, seeking to copy the relationship that Jesus has with God. Put simply, this sees an emphasis on the human responsibility to bring one's life into line with the example set by our Lord. The second view describes the Christian life as being, and I quote, being conformed to Christ. What we believe, say and do is brought into line with an inward, growing spiritual relationship with Christ established through faith. This is renewal and regeneration brought about through the work of the Holy Spirit. Like those compare and contrast essay questions from school days, again, there's no clear answer, rather the opportunity for each of us to explore alternatives that might resonate or stimulate the imagination. If I'm brutally frank, I'm not sure I'm a lot further on from my initial and rather negative reaction to today's gospel. Part of me wants one simple answer, end of, just like Peter and the disciples. It's very human. Like the not unreasonable desire shared by so many of us over the past 12 months to return to what we call normal life before the radical changes to our lives that began 12 months ago. In our very changed world, though, and particularly conscious of the now hundreds of thousands around the world who have had to have very much their own confrontation with their crosses over the last year, something's emerged for me that has been profoundly encouraging and something that's emerged as a direct result of the virus. The Wednesday evening sessions on Zoom, we now call Connect, have unexpectedly turned into a real source of faith. The opportunity to listen to others' stories, their experiences now and in the past have been variously inspiring, entertaining, humorous and insightful. I've been greatly moved by expressions of profound care and compassion over the last weeks, new insights into the Lord's Prayer. And reminded by the fact that, as we say when we exchange the peace during the Eucharist, we meet in his name. Surely this is also what Jesus wants. For us to be church, sharing stories, even if they're challenging, and stories of people sometimes difficult situations, in the here and now. Isn't this an aspect of being in the body of Christ? Maybe I can understand why Jesus gets so cross with Peter. Jesus wants so much for us. No wonder he got frustrated. Our sisters and brothers, those who call themselves Christians and those who don't, carrying their crosses in the here and now. But at least we have the God-given opportunity to lessen both theirs and our own loads, confident that there will be many opportunities to do just that as we try to follow him. Amen. still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In 
Let us pray. O God, we come to you with joy, for we are inheritors of the kingdom. We share with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in your promises. We rejoice in your love and your salvation. As we have received from you, may we bring light and hope to others. We pray for the joy and the mission of your church. Lord of love and light, hear us. You are the hope of all the world. We pray for better relationships between nations, for a greater sense of belonging to one great family. Lord of love and light, hear us. Lord, we thank you for all who through good relationships have shown your love. We pray for all whom we have loved and all who love us. We pray for the recently engaged and the newly married. We remember any who are struggling in their relationships. Lord of love and light, hear us. We come with all who have suffered at the hands of others, all refugees and homeless peoples, dispossessed peoples and distraught peoples. We pray for those afraid of any relationships, all who can no longer trust anyone, those who cannot trust themselves, we pray for all who are ill and for their loved ones in their anxiety. And in a moment of quiet, we bring before you those particularly on our hearts this day. Lord of light and love, hear us. We give thanks for all who have been faithful to you. We pray for those who now rejoice in your love and peace in its fullness. We pray for loved ones departed. Lord of love and light, hear us. And now we join our prayers together in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
and thank you for joining with us in our worship today. And now the blessing. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.